So in this video, we're going to talk about breast implant pockets. There are basically two major differences in breast implant pockets, but there are other uh, subtle variations on those pockets. So we're actually going to talk about four different types of pockets in this video. The first thing to realize is that underneath a woman's breast tissue, there's a, a pec muscle, this thick muscle that goes from the arm to the, uh, to the collarbone and to the breastbone, the clavicle and the sternum, and then it attaches to the ribs. So we can put an implant underneath this muscle, uh, which provides better coverage up here. There is no muscle down here, but at least we get more coverage of the implant up here. And there seems to be a lower risk of um, scar tissue called capsular contracture when we go underneath the muscle. Or we can put implants above the pec muscle. Some people like that more rounded look they get when the implant is sitting above the muscle because it's not covered by as much tissue, more of that round augmented look. Uh, but there, there does seem to be an increased risk of scar tissue formation or capsular contracture. Now the interesting thing is there are actually more than two breast implant pockets. When we look at going above the muscle, there's another variation of a pocket above the muscle called a subfascial pocket. So rather than putting the implant completely above the pec muscle, we actually lift up this wispy thin layer of connective tissue on top of the muscle called fascia, and we put the implant underneath that very, very thin wispy layer of fascia. No one really knows if that's going to make a major, major difference in appearance. Uh, the subfascial pocket, there are a number of studies on it, but they're smaller, and I don't think we have long-term evidence that it makes a huge difference, but the reported benefits are that the muscle fascia is a fairly strong layer of connective tissue even though it's thin so it may help sort of smooth out or blunt out the upper edge of the implant and make it look a little more natural. It does give a slightly thicker layer of coverage over the implant so there might be slightly less visible rippling. Again we don't really have good long-term studies to know if there's major advantages to this pocket. I think one potential disadvantage is when we're lifting up that thin layer of connective tissue off the muscle uh, there is a little more bleeding than just doing a a traditional subglandular pocket which is above that muscle fascia. So we talked about two different types of uh, pockets above the muscle. Going below the muscle again, we can put the implant completely covered by a muscle like this, or if a person has a little bit more of a droopy breast and we want that implant to settle and drop a little bit to give more perkiness and projection of, the, of, a, of a lower breast, we can actually release just a little bit of the muscle down here so the implant sits partially covered by muscle and partially exposed, and that's called a dual plane pocket because half the implant's above muscle and half the implant's below the muscle. So the dual plane pocket seems to have the advantage of letting that implant settle a little bit um, and provide a little bit more perkiness of the lower breast, and yet the upper breast is still covered by a, a nice layer of muscle, which um, hopefully will decrease the risk of rippling and um, feeling the edges of the implant. So really there are two main pockets, but, but actually there are four different pockets that we discussed during our consultation. But uh, as with everything else, we need to have a proper in-person assessment to figure out what pocket is best for you.